Greetings physics ninjas and we're going to take a look at the constituents of the atom. This is everything you need to know for AS physics and let's dive in. So discovery of the electron. Back in the 1800s, late 1800s, scientists were doing experiments to investigate um, the nature of atoms and, uh, and they found basically the electron. Now they used an experiment apparatus which was looking a bit like this. It's called a discharge tube. And what have we got? Let's explain what's going on here. So at this end, oops, let's get the right uh, tool. Right at this end, we have got a cathode. Now this was just connected to ground. It's a source of electrons. Over here, we've got an anode. And the, the anode may well have looked like a plate with a hole in it. Now it's connected to a high voltage supply. So plus high voltage. So And uh, I'll explain what's happening here in a little moment. Over here we've got a, a screen, which is a fluorescent screen. It's a zinc sulfide coated screen and what's happened what scientists found was that when you had an apparatus like this set up especially if you put a a heater here to heat up the cathode we got a, a, a something called a cathode rays they called it because they thought they were waves at first um, and the cathode rays would would go along in like this and they would hit the fluorescent screen and you'd get this green dot appearing. Uh, a gentleman called J.J. Thompson, here he is, Mr. J.J. Thompson. It's a very upright sounding name, isn't it? J.J. Thompson carried out this experiment and he, he applied a an electric field at right angles to this cathode ray and he also applied a magnetic field at right angles again. So if you can imagine this, so here's the here's the cathode, here's the rays that we're saying, and uh, we've got a we've got a situation where we've got a a plate here and a plate there. This one may be positively charged, and this guy may be negatively charged. And what J. J. Thompson discovered was that uh, this cathode ray was deflected towards the positive and hence I thought he deduced that well, these are negatively charged particles so negatively charged and what's more he was uh, a bit cleverer than that because he put some let's see if I can change this. he put a, a magnetic field he put the magnetic field at right angles now I'm going to draw that by doing little little dots that look like eyes I know and it's like an arrow coming out of the page and this is a magnetic field and what he was able to do was to balance the the uh, deflection of the uh, uh, what we now know are electrons towards the positive with the magnetic field which actually rebalanced and deflected the the uh, already deflected cathode ray back to the center and what he was able to do was he was able to measure something called the charge the the charge mass ratio charge mass ratio and this uh, another word for this is the specific charge of an electron okay so let's delve into some of this now exactly what what was actually going on um, the charge of an electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, coulomb is the charge that flows when one amp is uh, flowing for one second. One amp flows for whoopsie, can't spell, for one second. And, in, and if that, if you were to count all those electrons that would have gone past in that time, 
uh, you would have a lot of electrons. Uh, in fact, you're going to have about 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. That's quite a lot of electrons in one Coulomb. Okay. Okay. So uh, another thing that J.J. Thompson discovered was that these things, the electrons, are very, very, very tiny and have a very, very small mass. So the mass of an electron, m_e, is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay. And this led J.J. Thompson to propose a plum pudding model of an atom because what he said was that the electrons are getting ripped off the cathode here by this strong positive anode being accelerated through the hole like that and then going forward and then hitting the screen and he said well the, the cathode therefore must be full of electrons the atoms must be full of electrons and so he proposed a plum pudding model which would look uh, he sort of proposed it looked a, sort of a bit like this you've got this sort of positive jelly or cloud of jelly if, if you like and then the the electrons are in there and they're kind of uh, just like plums hence plum pudding and so the number of electrons balances the the positive jelly so that was the theory and that was the idea at that time by the way, if you want to find the specific charge of an electron, guess what you do? Well, very simple, and I've actually written this out already. Divide the charge by the mass. And so the specific charge of an electron turns out to be 1.76 times 10 to the 11. Coulombs per kilogram. Oopsie. Coulombs per kilogram. Okay, so whenever you want to, whenever you see that word specific, it just means per kilogram. Okay, well let's move on to 1909, when uh, Lord Rutherford, and here he is, uh, and his team, so Rutherford and his team, Geiger and Marsden, were uh, under uh, were. Uh, undertaking an experiment in Manchester in the UK um, to shoot alpha particles through a, a very very thin gold foil. Uh, what are alpha particles? Well alpha particles are, uh, are uh, fairly massive subatomic particles. We now know them to be two protons and two neutrons traveling at a very high speed and where do they come from? Well they come from the, the nucleus of an unstable atom and in a, an unstable atom some, you sometimes get radioactive decay and an alpha particle alpha particle is ejected to stabilize the, the, uh, the radioactive atom which um, literally changes it's it's uh, composition now that it's got rid of two protons and two neutrons. An alpha particle out of uh, such a decay is traveling very fast indeed. We're talking about 10,000 kilometers per second. And so if you have a radioactive source here, then that's shooting alpha particles in all directions. Uh, we've got a little hole here, so we only have the alpha particles going in one direction here along this straight this line. And they hit the gold foil and what what uh, Rutherford's team uh, observed was that about one about one in every 8,000 alpha particles were scattered through an angle that was greater than 90 degrees now this was a, a very unexpected result because going back to going back to uh, I've lost it it's got our ideas earlier. Ah, here we are. Yeah, well, I, that's right. Well, remember, we talked about the. Uh, remember, we talked about the 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 J. J. Thompson plum pudding and this model of the atom, where we've got this positive goo, uh, and in there we've we've got then these um, 
these electron plums just uh, orbiting in various orbits inside the goo. Uh, so imagine that if you were firing a, an alpha particle going at 10,000 kilometers per second and into this sort of jelly-like substance. Well, it'd be like firing a bullet through a gun, wouldn't it? It'd be just sort of just go straight through. Hardly any deflection would be expected. And that's what Rutherford and his team were expecting. They were really expecting only a few of these alpha particles to be deflected by very, very small amounts. What they found was that 1 in 8,000 were deflected through very, very large angles, which was very strange. So they had to come up with a, slight, a new theory, a new model of the atom. And the model they came up with is one that looks very familiar to us now because that's how we're taught. The classical model now is the, uh, the nucleus is a very small part at the center of an atom and most of the atom is empty space. The electrons orbit in shells yeah, so much for my stream. So much for my uh, nice curves, but uh, they they orbit the, the the nucleus in in shells around the nucleus. The nucleus is positively charged because it contains protons. This is what they proposed, and the electrons are are negatively charged and orbit, being pulled into the center uh, through electrostatic attraction of a negative charge with positive charge. And that was the, the new theory. And hence the, the birth of this new theory, this is the birth of the nucleus. The nucleus idea. Give you an idea of the scale of this. If the nucleus scale, sorry, if an atom scale is about at 10 to the minus 10 meters, that's a uh, 0.0000001 or thereabouts meters, very, very small, then the, the scale of the, the nucleus of, in this case, gold nucleus is 10 to the power of minus 15 meters. That is 100,000 times smaller than the atom size. 100,000 times smaller. So basically an atom is empty space with all of its mass concentrated at the center.